the Mind Body Podcast, your rebellious podcast with me, your host, Maria, where it is all about a strong body, calm mind, healing, and fully living. And today I have a special guest, and that is Bridget Boykowski joining us to talk all about branding the authentic you. Bridget, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, hello, Maria. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure being in your show today, <laughs> talking about oh, more or less my journey or about being rebellious. <laughs> about all of it. How about that? We make a deal. We talk about all the spicy topics. Yes. And, yeah. you know, when we connected, the one thing that I love about some of the stuff that you said that resonated with me and based, it relates to everything that I do is how your authenticity shows up in your brand mm -hmm. and how if you're misaligned with yourself, that reflects in your branding. But before we get to all of that, let's start with getting to know Bridget. So give us three words and a little bit of a backstory behind each word to tell us who you are. Yes. So um, I start with the three words. I mean, there are surely more than three words, but to describe me right now would be uh, I'm a passionate person. I'm very passionate about what I'm doing, about serving people, about hosting people, about making other people feel good, and about feeling good while doing it, right? So it's also about me. So I'm feeling good when while I make others happy. I'm having joy. I'm having fun. And it's it's exciting and it's rewarding when I see people smile when they are having their ahas, seeing that there is a door opening for them. So there is more out there in the world because very often we have this limited perspective and working with my clients is just opening doors for them and, and bringing the inner beauty and the inner brilliance out of them. So this is my first word passionate, being passionate, but I'm also solution oriented. So that goes along with that. I find in everything, in every challenge, in every setback, I find a solution. In every problem, I find a solution. And while appreciating things how they are, I also love to optimize them. So there is always room for improvement. And when I perceive something as being perfect, then I see it as a role model and as something to strive for, strive for and something that can be achieved. And there's one more element that comes to solution oriented is I am very creative um, in a sense that I create things out of nothing. So I, I was growing up in an environment we didn't have much. We had to turn around our, we call it in Austria, the shillings, so the dollar, the cents, you know several times before you spend something. So I had to be very creative in making things beautiful and optimizing things. So there's a, a lot you can do with less and, 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 you know, create something beautiful out of it. And I would say the last word that describes me is having integrity. I keep my word, I keep my promise, and I follow through. So that's that's Bridget. That's Brigitte. <laughs> I, I can relate to so much of what you're saying. It's interesting. I was having a conversation with a friend who is an entrepreneur as well yesterday, and she just made a transition into a new job that she actually loves, and it's fulfilling, and she's passionate about what she does. And she said, now I can understand how you feel because I feel the same way. Like with what I do, it's my baby. I'm passionate about it. I believe in it. And there is so much fulfillment, like you said, from serving others and helping them, you know, feel better into their bodies, to get a little bit stronger, having those mindset moments of ahas. And I think it's powerful. And I think that is such a different place to operate from, a place of passion versus from the box. Like you said, I call it the box. Mm -hmm. of what you have to do what you must do um there is just so much fulfillment so much joy so much energy the energy is completely different and let's tie that right into what you do branding like how does that tie how does an entrepreneur shine that light through their brand <laughs> i say that every star every every branding everything when it comes to branding, starts with mindset. 
So it's all about mindset, branding, okay. mindset. And when you want to talk about entrepreneur, entrepreneurial branding is, is, it is branding, but it's, it's got a different approach because um, you have to step into the mindset usually you're coming from from an organization or a corporation or you come like I I did I came from a corporation and academics so you're always kind of an employee right so that is a different mindset creating uh and designing and and being part of an organization demands a different mindset and looking at branding as when you are an entrepreneur, it's it's just different because an, as an entrepreneur, the first thing is you have to step into the mindset of an, of a business owner. So it starts with there. What is my vision? What is my mission? What is my higher purpose? What's my North Star? What are the values that I base everything on? It's really about uh, digging deep into, into your in the gut, into your in 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 inner feelings, into into your journey, into your experiences that you had, and figuring out the big why, why you're here, why you want to serve, how you want to serve your clients. So it's mindset, and then based on that, you you gonna create or you develop, you define your personal brand. It's who you are at your best it's who you are how you want to serve it's how in what way you want to make other people feel in a certain way because it's it's what you are sending out is going to be perceived in the market as something by creating your identity as a person but also then as a company because an entrepreneur is usually the face of the company when you start off as a, as a solopreneur but you want to um, with your identity that you're creating, you are, um, um, it's something that is reflected in the marketplace as an image. So the identity that you're sending out is reflected by an image that then is formed, is created by the people um, that, that you're in touch with through all the different touch points yeah, when it comes to marketing. Yeah. So, um, it's a stepwise approach when it comes to branding. So it's mindset shift. It's about personal branding, discovering, defining, creating your personal brand, and then um, create the, the company brand uh, based on that. That's 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 entrepreneurial branding. I can relate so much what you're saying, Brigitte. Uh, Bridget. Brigitte, yes, so Bridget, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> um, because you know, you know my story. I came from an academic academic family. I went to college, I went into finance, I was in corporate for almost 20 years. I also come from Eastern Europe, which I think you know a little bit about the mindset of Eastern Europe. And suddenly I was an entrepreneur. And I I had honestly no idea of the concept of the mindset transformation to be an entrepreneur. And everything that you're talking about, you're absolutely, from my standpoint, it is exactly right. Because it, my journey changed with my mindset shift. And my business started happening is when I shifted my mindset. And I started realizing that, yeah, my brand is me. And what I offer and my values and what makes me excited and what I bring to the people, the value that I bring, how I serve people, because with what I do, there is hundreds of Pilates studios nowadays. So why would somebody choose to work with me? Mm -hmm. What about me and my brand attracts them versus any other studio that's out there? Yeah. And one thing that uh, I loved into your profile, you talk about unique brilliance. And I was like, oh, I love <laughs> Unique brilliance, because, you know, that, that kind of relates to me telling people, I help you unleash the rebel within, right? Because to me, a rebel is your unique self, being your unique self. And that's a journey to unraveling that person. I th yeah, it's it's. I think it's so much more your unique self. You need to be aware of what your strengths are. You need to be aware of what is the uniqueness that you can provide with the whole blend of of your character of your being of your of your um competences 
of everything that you are, that you give, that you live, that you breathe. So that is your uniqueness. And a lot of people don't know that. And it's interesting. I have a lot of conversations, um, of course, because I'm I'm doing I having an online business and I have um, uh, one-on-one clients. I also have big corporations as clients. But as one thing that I'm always astonished is that people, when I ask them, so what's your set of values? What are your three core values or five core values? It's hard to bring it down to three, right? And I said, oh, I haven't really thought about that yet. And then I was like, okay, um, you are now in the third year of, of your company and you want to you want to, you know, grow it. Yeah, but branding, maybe in a few years. And then I was like, okay, what's going on here? Branding is everything. It, 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 it starts at the beginning. I mean, it's, it's understanding who you are in the first place. So I think that... That awareness of of who I am and what I can bring to the world and and pruning it down to unique your uniqueness, your brilliance, your beauty, everything can be a beauty and a brilliance. It does not necessarily need to be a beautiful body or whatever. it's it can be a flaw. Yeah, yeah it's it very often something that differentiates you from everyone else. Like it's English is not my mother tongue, and I'm always. And this is, you know, oh, yeah, how do I come across now? I'm not finding the right term for it. Maybe I'm stuttering here or there because I have to put together a whole sentence. I want to express what I'm feeling through my words. And sometimes I I just don't find those words. And then I think, okay, uh, how do I come across here now? And uh, But that is the beauty. People say, ah, that's so charming. I like your accent. So it makes you stand it can, out. That beauty yeah. can be something that stands out, or actually, you should leverage that. It's part of your brand, and if you understand what is what what is part of what defines your brand, then you're gonna be on brand if you own it. But you have to own it. That means you are authentic and everything. Yeah, and and that there in this authenticity is this vulnerability, owning your flaws. I mean, who is perfect? Come on. Who wants to connect with someone who is perfect? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 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 that emotions. The people resonate with you. Ah, I can see myself in her. I can see myself in him. I can see myself in that brain that has a stance, that, that positions itself as something uh, unique or superior, specific, defined. People want that. People want to hold on to something like that, especially right now. They feel safe if they have something out there that resonates with them. Who or what understands their feelings? Yeah, emotional connection to that. And, you know, I will tell you for me and through my journey, the marketing piece, you know, in the beginning was kind of like survival mode, do what you can to get the business going. And as the pieces start coming together, you start realizing the value of branding, Mm -hmm. of who you are, of the message that you show up, how your values reflect into the marketing that you put out there, right? The videos that you put there, the postings that you put there. But I do, I would say I had that point and I think maybe I shared that with you when we first spoke is, I was like, I had a point where I was like, wow, I should have paid more attention in marketing class (laughs) because- I remember. (laughs) (laughs) Because yeah. you don't really think about it until you're faced and it's it's a very different thing receiving marketing versus having to market yourself. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that you brought up, once again, just yesterday I was talking about that. We were talking with somebody about our, we call the dark secrets. And those are the stories. Those are your flaws. Those are your things that you don't want people to know. But for how many of us, when we're vulnerable and we share that, people are like, oh my gosh, that is me. And then you have that connection with the person because now you're relatable versus you're on a pedestal and they're like, well, I don't have the perfect life, yes, perfectly social media life that this person lives, right? Because we're all humans. Yeah, yeah. It's those stories that you're fearful to share. Those are the stories that need to get out. But you need to be ready for that. You cannot force yourself. And you know when you are ready to share that particular story in life, then you're going to do that. And then it's going to resonate. Then people relate to that. 
So it's it's also about feeling into into your inner gut, into your inner wisdom um, to know when it's time. I, I'm not talking about okay, you have to wait until everything is hundred percent perfect. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the inner readiness when you know you need to do it now, even though you don't want to. You are afraid. You're fearful of failing of how you're perceived in the in the market and everything. But you have yeah. this inner urge now. Now I'm sitting down, now I'm doing that. Now I'm writing that post, now I'm writing that blog, now I'm doing the video, now I'm doing this or that. Um, it's pushing yourself out of the comfort zone. Yeah. And then yeah, it's being courageous. It's 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 being bold um, in doing that. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And I, I would also agree that it is a process. You slowly <laughs> start realizing it, but you're right. What are people going to say? What are people going to think? Then you start hearing feedback, right? Of people who think differently, that kind of like pulls you back. So you really have to be, you have to own it. I love that you said you have to own it. You have to be ready to own it because it can, it can be kind of disastrous if you don't. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, this is another aspect that I have meant I have not mentioned before when it comes to mindset. It's also about how to deal with fear and how to deal with limiting beliefs. You might not have that to that extent as an employee, um, because you are in a safe place, you have your your workplace, you have your your position and and whatever is 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 perceived to be part of that. Um, yeah daily routine and, and procedure and everything. But as a, as a business owner, you're confronted with that. And there are people that have self-worth. They are confident and they go out there. They never have a problem with that. They might have something else to carry. Yeah? But a lot of us, and I think especially when it comes to women, and um, they are sitting on the fence, and then they okay. Now I'm now I'm doing it. Now now I start my own business. Now I kind of jump ship, and then they all have this fear and this limiting beliefs. So what what if I'm not carved out for that? What if people think like, oh my god, what is she doing now? And uh, I mean, this she will never succeed or something like that. Um, you 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 have all this. Um, self-talk that is going on, negative self-talk that keeps you from doing that. And this is also something that you or we need to work on. How do we deal with those limiting beliefs? Because it's the stories we make up. It doesn't mean that this is true. And most of the time it is not true. And I'll we say procrastinating yeah we are <laughs> we are not we are not taking the next step forward because we are afraid to do something wrong but I think the only thing that is kind of wrong not doing anything because it's also an action of not doing anything and then we will see once we start taking our steps once we start this journey and things fall into its place things are unfolding I think it goes right back to what you said in the very beginning, that it all relates to mindset, that self-talk that's running in the background that has been in your head for however many years needs mm -hmm. to be quiet. The stories need to be rewritten. Mm -hmm. And I, I can personally very much relate to that because I was criticized, moked when I made my change. It felt lonely. I didn't feel supported. And yeah, part of me was excited, but the other part of me was like, what the hell am I doing? Because of all of the feedback I was getting from the world. So had not stood to what I really, my intuition pushed me to do, which is also something that we're not taught to do, trust our intuition. I would have gone right back to default, to what was comfortable and perceived as safe versus honestly, like experience life at a completely different level, which I even think it's hard to explain to people who have not gone through that change and transformation. And I think you only then understand when we relate it to branding now, what we only understand what branding is once we are going through that transformation, finding ourselves, understanding how can we best serve, how can we be the best version of ourselves and elevating that going forward because the brand, a brand is nothing fixed. It's also like we have a growth mindset as entrepreneurs usually. Uh, and the brand evolves with that. 
my brand might have a, a different take or a different feeling next year because there is more coming into my world of brands, more services or a shift of services. You're evolving and growing. Uh, That's what this, is, this is something that is a growing thing. It's a changing thing. It's nothing that is fixed. And that's beautiful. And we have to be open to whatever is, is coming, open to the unknown. And we have to also be willing to live in this in this world of, of, of discomfort, in a sense. Yeah? We always try to be in a in a zone of where we feel comfortable you know it's all comfy and and wonderful and we don't need to do anything no it there is it's, it's always something is going on and um we are asked to continuously uh, not reinvent but finding better solutions uh, finding better ways of how to serve um because it's it's our desire to to change and to to evolve and to bring the best of us every day. And I, I think it's, it's for me. It's, I am, I'm 100% agree with you. And I think once you get onto that journey of living outside the comfort zone and you feel that exhilarance from l- truly living rather than existing is what I call it. I don't yeah. think they're really going back to the box. Because no. you can't from experience. No. So for example, I would never be able to go back to a, a full-time job. It's it's just impossible because then I'm put into a box. It's about playing small and it's about taking orders from someone else. I'm having a hard time taking orders from someone. I, I it's just, you know, once you're it's used to it, it's a different mindset. Yeah, I love to collaborate with others, to be in a team, to bring about something that you can't, you cannot go alone. Because, you know, when you collaborate, there's usually, there should be a win-win, there should be a balance, there should be something. I cannot achieve this alone. So that's why we are collaborating together. And then is this the right partner for me to collaborate? Uh, it's It's about... It comes from management, strategic management. The same holds for people. <laughs> so well, you know, I call that our tribe. So even as entrepreneurs, I mean, yes, we don't work in a manager-employee relationship, but there is still that tribe that cheers you, supports you, collaborates you. You know, you use it as a referral, have as guests, right? Exchange ideas, and mm-hmm. when you have people who I say vibe on the same level and have similar mindset. You can have different level of conversations than somebody who has never been through this, because a lot of times people can't relate to what you're talking about if you have not been through that journey. Exactly. And that's why I think it's important to surround yourself with like minds, with other entrepreneurs, and also having uh, the willingness or allowing yourself to say goodbye to things that do not serve you anymore, that had her, his, its time. There's always a time for something and then there's something com- new coming and and you might outgrow your environment. That That is nothing bad. That is actually great. You allow yourself to evolve and then saying goodbye and, and letting go things that do not serve you, but being open and embrace those things, those people that are on the same journey, maybe a little bit ahead, maybe a little bit behind you, but you know, there is a giving and taking and it's got a balance of energy, um, of, uh, of, 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 of money. And um, so, and, and support. Yeah. That is, that, that is important. So yeah, we, we need to be in this, in this, um, how do you call that? I would call that yes. a space of alignment. And I know you use the word alignment as well. Yes, yeah, with other alignment. people. Yeah. So um, it, it it does not necessarily need to be, or very often, it's it's not your family. It's it's someone, because of family, you have a different relationship with your family other than you're in the business with them. Yeah? But I cannot talk about my business with my family and, and getting advice in a business sense because they have a different perspective on things. Uh, They come from a different, you know, a different environment that does not align with mine. So it's always good to have people around you that really understand you, that lift you and where there is a balance so that the energy is not taken from you, but 
the energy that's becoming more. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it doesn't drain your energy, but fuels your energy, fuels you. Mm-hmm. Brigitte, that is so good. And it's it's all aligned to everything that I talk about, which is why I knew you would be a fantastic guest for the show. Brigitte, Brigitte, Bridget. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm sticking with your German pronunciation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's fine. <I'm... laughs> Let's, um, do you have a favorite quote or a piece of advice you would like to share with us? Uh, a piece of advice. I mean, there's a lot of piece of advice um, for entrepreneurs, you you would say. yeah. Uh, so keep on going. And when you think you cannot do it anymore, keep on going. And if you are a rebel, you get to overcome all this obstacle because there are these challenges and roadblocks and obstacles out there. All these rejections, all these no's keep on moving and never stop. And also think about that there are the breakthroughs that are coming from the breakdowns. Um, when there is too many rejections and too many no's and you feel like, oh my God, what am I doing? There is going to be a breakthrough. And I've gone through a lot of them, um, but I always stood up and they I become stronger through them. I continued and it makes you resilient. And it didn't, it also... And this kind of weird, but you are embracing rejections and setbacks because you know there is something good in it, something that you learn out of that and that you that makes you stronger and, and helps you to move forward. And most importantly, uh, staying through, your, through to yourself, owning it, as we have talked about, yeah, being the authentic you. And it's 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 the human that people want to to connect with you and Another thing that most of us have, especially when they when, when they kind of deal with imposture and everything, do not deny what you have accomplished because you all you see the shining things and then you see other people are doing great and everything has to be done like someone else says. No, you need to integrate what you think is best for you. And just look back what you have accomplished in the last year or in the six months before. Not comparing yourself with all the others who earn millions of dollars in a year, but seeing all the little steps that you you have been taking because we all have the beauty and the brilliance in us and we often don't see it, but others see it. Surround yourself with like minds and get a coach. Do I have a coach? Yes. Yes. Do I need a coach? No. Get a coach. Yes. I I'm with you on that one. I've always had coaches, all sorts of coaches, and they're well worth the investment because you know what? These are people who are a step ahead and they will lead you through it. They'll be your cheerleaders. And that you know, when you're going through those, I call them growth opportunities. We can also call them roadblocks. Um, they will help you make it through it more resiliently and you will make it through it like you said it's just the learning there is a lesson in there that there is for us to learn and the more lessons we learn the more we uncover of who we are and the more powerfully we show up as our true self I think so all right Bridget Bridget, give us your definition of rebellious oh my god (laughs) There's a lot and I it's it's very much aligned with how I feel because I've also always been one. Um a rebellious individual for me is in aligned with in alignment with identity, with beliefs and attitudes and values. And it's someone who fearlessly embraces their authenticity and courageously pursues the life uh, they 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 serve and they desire. So I would say this rebel is really someone who is unafraid of the challenges of societal norms, of family expectations like mine, and also daring to follow their heart's desires and reach for the moon. I always wanted to reach for the moon, yeah, despite being discouraged and advised to play it safe and remain content with the status quo. So it's like, don't ask for more in life, right? And as a rebel, I found joy and excitement in breaking free yeah, from all these limitations imposed upon you, whether by others or by your by our own doubts, by my own doubts. Yeah. 
it's really about the doubts as well. Your whatever doubts that is, but it was also about my doubts. And because of doing so, others that observe you, you inspire them. And they admire you. And even, and that's what I have experienced, they envy you for that journey of growth and self-discovery. Once a, a friend told me, I could have never done that, what you did. And it was in a way I didn't know how to take it. There was a lot of, I felt a lot of envy in it, but at the same time, the admiration for that. It was really an interesting um, uh, experience for me, this situation. You know, it's so interesting to see how people who first were like mocking you and like that silly and downgrading what you do, to mm-hmm. like and seeing you making things happen to that admiration to the envy and the jealousy that comes with it and, yeah. you know, and that goes back to what you said of realizing what things are to stay with you and what things and people and circumstances it's time to let go yeah yeah and actually so to finish that up in my opinion being a rebellious is a transformative power of first of all pursuing one's own dreams and living your own at your own terms and second becoming an inspiration for others to embrace their uniqueness and live authentically so it's it's it has both aspects in it I think that is it for me yeah Said. I, I absolutely uh, it's, it's hard. I mean, I consider myself as a rebel, 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 rebel right? Uh-huh. And I was always torn between believing in myself and doubting myself. So at the end of the day, I was always going for it, no matter what. And yeah. that yeah. self talk will always be there, right? It's learning to move forward and take action regardless of the talk and the the more you do it you're working up that muscle and it becomes a little bit easier to move forward yeah so. as you say it's it's a muscle yeah courageous being courageous is actually and being confident and doing things it's is a muscle that you're working every day and Practice. challenging yourself every day moving forward and Honestly, I couldn't do without it. It's like fitness, right? <laughs> because, yes, it becomes what we were saying in the beginning. Once you start, there's no going back. Oh. All right, Bridget, let's see. Where can people find you, follow you, follow your story, seek your help? What are your um, online channels, website? Where can people find you? Okay, so I have a website, uh, BridgetRains.com, uh, where you find everything. My preferred social media platform is LinkedIn. So you will find me there. I'm the brand enchantress, so I call myself, because I think that's that's really interesting. On one side, I, I come from the academia, and on the other side, I I illuminate br- beauty and brilliance. And this, this goes very well together, I think. Two opposing forces. <laughs> And um, yeah, they find me there. Of course, I'm on Instagram and on Facebook, but I post and, but I'm not really busy on these channels. I don't have the time because when I'm on a social media channel, I'm, I'm, I'm posting myself, I'm doing it myself and I'm not having anyone else because I want to build relationships and not just put things out there. I want to, I want to really um, provide my services, get to know my audience and, and build trust and uh, support them. So I I rather like to be in a conversation in a one-on-one or do my workshops or do my my company coach salting, I call it coach salting, because I'm not a consultant to work something out, I report and then I just hand that over. It's about getting all the information they already have inside and bring that, transform that and bring it to the outside. And so that they really see it, understand it, work with it and understand who they really are, what their brand identity is that they want to uh, communicate to the world so it's 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 deep work yeah, and yeah. it starts with mindset <laughs> starts with mindset we circled right back where we started Bridget yeah. you are an inspiration I appreciate you meeting with us and thank you for managing this with the time difference that we have you rebel thank you for tuning in I hope you found this helpful do let us know if you have any questions of course thank you for tuning in and make sure to stay rebellious we will see you next time thank you Bridget can get enough of those rebellious conversations? Do make sure you subscribe, like, and share with your friends.